Hey people, Dodger Dave here on this lovely Sabbath morning. It is August 9th, 2020. So um, I'm going to be responding to a, uh, a, a, a question uh, in the comment section of one of the videos which asked me, hey Dodger Dave, are you going to be doing something discussing the relationship between the LDS church and um, what's going on with the coronavirus situation. So that's going to relate a lot to uh, what we had in the Book of Mormon warnings, uh, particularly um, noted in Ether chapter 8 as, uh, as, as often um, uh, brought up by uh, LDS President uh, Ezra Taft Benson who was also the Secretary of Agriculture uh, while he was an apostle and under that particular um, duty um, as a matter of fun facts visited my grandfather who was head of the um, credit bureau at the time established the credit unions throughout the United States so um, so yeah Ezra Taft Benson was uh, and, and came with an entourage over to my grandparents home uh, back in the days when they lived I think in uh, around Alexandria Virginia so they could be next to Washington DC and um, yeah, Ezra Taft Benson uh, really promoted the idea that the Book of Mormon was telling the truth, that we needed to be on guard, as it tells us, uh, when it is Moroni warning us Gentiles in uh, presumably the United States primarily, that the government set up by God is a free nation as he freed us from the great uh, oppression of the British uh, monarchy as, as really noted in uh, First Nephi chapter 13 in the Book of Mormon and then elsewhere as I said uh, Ether chapter 8 was brought out quite a bit about this secret combination that would seek to destroy the freedom of all nations and people and bring to pass both the uh, spiritual and temporal destruction of all peoples and basically uh, this was discussed as uh, the United States being submerged into a world super state, which happens to be, um, you know, one of, one of the goals of uh, the Council on Foreign Relations, whom our presidents tend to take their foreign uh, policy advice, whether they're in the Republican or the Democrat Party, year after year. Anyway, um, that's what we're going to talk about. So uh, we're going to take a look at. Uh, how consistent the LDS Church has been with the stance that they had, uh, you know, being being uh, emphasized in the Book of Mormon and discussed by J. Reuben Clark of the First Presidency and uh, Ezra Taft Benson um, throughout his apostleship and, in, and including the time when he was president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. Well, it is Sunday morning, so it's probably appropriate that we started with some Sabbath music, right? However, you know, if you think it's going to be I'm a child of God or follow the prophet, he knows the way, repeated three times hypnotically, um, yeah, then you might want to skip ahead about three minutes because um, I've rewritten some lyrics um, to a song that really relates to this whole subject. I mean, some people think that we're just paranoid when we talk about the stuff that's in the Book of Mormon. Well, we're going to look at some facts and take it from there. Three minutes from now, your station, this station, will return to something a little less boisterous. <laughs> Ho! 
you call my brain. Oh yeah. I need someone to show me the things in life that I can't find. I can't see the things that bring to happiness. Bed. I need someone to read it to me though. I fall asleep too fast. Let's move the books and go to the next thing. Here I am right there. Oh, that was Lucifer's Pizza, by the way. Just, just, it's just pizza, people. Just pizza. All right, here's a flag at half mast. Why? Why are we seeing government buildings and banks flying half mast flags? Well, because everyone's dying of the coronavirus, of course. We're going to get to a page of mine that's going to show the history of this uh, L LDS uh, narrative of protecting from secret combinations that want to uh, submerge the United States into a new world order or a one world super state where the United States loses its preeminence that God gave it for goodness sakes, right? So. If everybody's dying of coronavirus, then overall death statistics ought to be a lot higher. So let's take a look. Let's take a look. Here we got from the year 2001 to 2020, the present. And let's move me out of the way here. What you can see is, you know, it fluctuates a little bit till about 2008. The, the, the total, this is total death rate, right? Total death rate. So we should see these numbers skyrocketing if we've got a pandemic instead of just a plandemic, right? But let's take a look. So here we go. Uh, 2008, 2009. So we're at 8.13%. And what we've got here is it's steadily moving up. Before COVID-1984, right? <clears throat> Before the branch COVIDians took over and destroyed our economy, what we see is a steady uptick in the actual death rate. And that you know the the the, the uptick or the, the change is noted in the column on the right here. Okay, and then the total the total death rate you know, eight people per thousand or whatever, right? Um, roughly is, is going up, up, up year after year. And that rate of increase since about 2008 has not changed, has not changed. So here we are in 2020, in 2020, and what we're looking at is it's at 8.8, .8, and it was at 8.782 last year, the rate of increase is the same as it was last year, which is a little less than it was the year before. So, so everybody, so so if we're having all these COVID deaths, that means everybody else, all these other deaths just stopped happening because everybody's so much healthier <laughs> that didn't die of COVID. <laughs> uh, figure it out, people. 
it's it, it's it's not that difficult. Here again, we can see uh, you know the the graph in the red here, and then it goes up to the green. And look, it's slightly going down um, as we hit 20, go from 2019 to 2020. Not going, <laughs> yeah, you know the the rate of increase. So it's it's just crazy. We we don't have this. But we're shutting down the economy for something that, like, I suppose I've seen statistics uh, represented on Facebook for Utah that you have 99.99% .99 of not dying from, you know, not getting and dying from. If you get it, then you've got, you know, whatever, 99 point something else percent of not dying, right? I mean, it's ridiculous. Here, this is, you know, a bar chart showing the same thing as far as the rate of increase or the rate of you know of death uh, overall in the United States. So a pandemic is uh, is not causing the overall death rate to go up. We just call all the deaths COVID, and <laughs> the numbers remain the same for total deaths. It's it's like I said, it's it's not that tough. <laughs> Not that tough. I didn't want to say rocket science because, you know, rocket science is basically made up to uh, pretend things that, yeah, yeah, I've discussed in other videos. Okay, what do we get there? All right, so, so much for that part here. Let's, let's move over and take a look. First, we want to give some credit where credit's due. This, so this was uh, New Miscellaneous who said, are you planning on doing a video about the COVID-19 and the LDS Corporation willing, will, LDS Corporation's willing participation in going along with this fake news pandemic? So that was, that was the question. So thanks for that. I have mentioned this subject, but yeah, there we got some statistics that are thought provoking people. I haven't seen anybody talking about that. Do they talk about it on the news? I don't know. I don't watch that crap. It's fiction. For the most part, I mean, why else would they need laws passed to protect them from being sued and having any liability if they are reporting stuff that is complete BS? I don't know. All right, so, um, let's go here. Let's go here. What are we gonna go into? Oh, actually, don't know I have it open. So yeah, here are some of the links. Some of the links. All right, the fruits of the gospel, the story of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Book of Mormon, the Book of these are all, you know, pages on my website. We're gonna go to the one on secret combinations. Secret combinations. Come on, come on, come on, come on. All right. Mormon Truth Videos Gospel Topics Hub, incorporating videos into the narrative on a page by page, or in other words, topic by topic basis. So we've got appropriate, you know, subject appropriate videos. I guess I'll just read. I'm gonna read a little bit from my own. Um, from the narrative here, and if you go to this, uh, and the, the links will be down below, right? Uh, to these various uh, pages that I've, you know, I put together so that you'd have a ref, uh, a, a a resource that that allows you to read context, and then say, you know what? I'd rather just click and learn uh, while I'm uh, doing some mindless task like vacuuming. I don't know, put it on your head, you know. <clears throat> I did plenty of mindless tasks like that for the church as an employee, so that wasn't a, uh, that wasn't anything to demean anyone that's vacuuming. It just happens to be something mindless and you can take advantage of the opportunity to uh, learn things. I used to put a cassette tape, does any, do, do you young folks know what a cassette tape is? Yeah, you know, it came up, it was between like eight track and uh, CDs or something like that, yeah. So um, I, I put uh, a cassette, uh, portable cassette deck on my belt and uh, uh, pop in uh, a tape from the church's, uh, from the meeting house library, whether it was general conference talks or the scriptures, BYU devotionals, whatever it was, uh, I had all that at my disposal 
uh, and um, I heavily self-programmed. Okay. Oh, Michelle Obama, look how sneaky you're being, throwing the horns of Pan, or is it Satan? Alright, so let's just mosey down here. There's Anton LaVey and this is daughter. And Anton LaVey and uh, Skull and Bonesman, Senator Kerry. And Ronald Reagan. Anybody notice that they're all throwing the horns? Yeah, okay. Obama. Michael Jackson! Bill Clinton. Oh, he's throwing it the way that Helen Keller helped us with. No, you only know he's got the fingers bent just right. Well, anyway, he's got the thumb out though. So maybe the Clintons are just telling us how, how much they love us. And, uh, you know, they'd love for you to be found on some train tracks run over if you discussed anything or witnessed anything about the cocaine distribution out of Arkansas. There's George Bush. No, oh, he's not doing it the way that could be confused with I love you. This guy must be an Iranian. I think they were Iranians. There's Hillary. She loves us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, I did catch a little flack from a, a person. Uh, uh, he said, why did you put... Uh, Ronnie James Dio throwing the horns in there. He was, that's innocent. It's got it's rock and roll, and rock and roll's all innocent. I love rock and roll, but you got to realize when you're being programmed, and you got to know that these guys are consistent with pushing the narrative of Christianity in rock and roll. What? Yeah, even if they say we're bad boys, they push the Christian narrative, whether it's ACDC and their album cover. Antichrist, devil's children, they're associating Antichrist with the, you know, the, 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 the boogeyman in Christianity, the devil. But really, they just play good guy, bad guy, and he's their best marketing helper, right? They're actually business partners, kind of like when you go to the car dealership, they play good guy, bad guy, or cops, good, good cop, bad cop. They're on the same team, they just don't want you to know that. George Bush. And Tommy Monson, the handshake tells us they're on the same team. But wait a minute. I thought these guys, I thought we were warned in the Book of Mormon about these folks. Anyway, I'm not going to go through every picture there. You'll see uh, politician after politician throwing the horns and stuff like that. Yeah, so when you see me throwing the sixes there, the all-seeing eye and sixes, it's about the sixes for me, people. Right? My layered messages. All right. And they're going to help us out a little bit on this one here and, and show the Masonic, uh, you know. <laughs> you ever done that in the temple, folks? Yeah, well, that's Freemasonry stolen by Joseph Smith from the Blue Lodge there. The uh, you know the tokens that you'd find um, as uh, entered apprentice, fellow craft, and master mason are familiar under different names in the LDS temple endowment, as well as the five points of fellowship. All right, we got some fellowship going with Prince Hall Masons. Masonry was segregated in those days. Maybe it still is. I don't know, but. Joseph Smith probably would have been killed sooner if he hadn't written the uh, Book of Abraham narrative uh, cursing uh, the Canaanites or black people uh, as pertaining to the priesthood so they couldn't enter the temple and be receiving Masonic tokens with white people at the same time because, you know, you can't be doing that. Prince Hall Masons, well, you don't see any white folks hanging out with them and you don't see any black folks hanging out with the uh, York Rite Masons that ran the lodge, the, you know, the blue, well, masonry where Joseph Smith was uh, at, in Nauvoo, he was a member of the blue lodge, meaning the first three degrees. After that, you know, you're going to probably move up the ladder a little bit, and in that case, that was run by York Rite as opposed to Scottish Rite Freemasons. Not a whole lot of difference that I'm aware of. Okay, let's start reading. Let's minimize me. Gonna minimize me? 
All right. Because, uh, I don't know, maybe I won't minimize me. I don't know, I feel a little self-conscious putting my glasses on, right? Is that it? I might have to pause this. Come on, I've got, what did I do? This, this is a really nice uh, engine, bit of ingenuity, I think, here. Stick this right in the cup holder thing, and I got all these glasses and All right, so we'll be seeing what the Book of Mormon has to say about this and, uh, you know, related stuff because the LDS Church certainly does seem to be promoting uh, the, the, the idea that, that, that we should be concerned, afraid of Corona and follow our leaders. I mean, they've closed the temples despite the fact that you received, you were clothed in the garment of the holy priesthood and as long as you are faithful, it will remain, it will, you know, remain as a shield and a protection to you against the power of the destroyer until your mission on the earth is finished. That's pretty much word for word what they told me in the LDS, te LDS temple. In other words, it's a magic charm. That's what a magic charm is. Um, just like, uh, you know, the, the uh, holiness to the Lord parchment that uh, Hiram Smith uh, had on his person apparently when he was shot along with uh, Joseph Smith, who had his Jupiter talisman. Um, those things didn't protect him, and I guess you can only speculate if their temple garments would have, because I think I read they didn't have them on. Oh my goodness, that's how Brigham managed to have them killed by Dr. Richards and John Taylor, other Freemasons, um, more likely to answer to the much higher degree Freemason. Uh, Brigham Young, who apparently was answering probably to uh, Jesuit Jean-Pierre de Smith, but we'll talk about that another time. Okay, on go the glasses. Oh my God. Yeah, this is too much of a hassle. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna have to just get rid of my stuff. Oh. Goodbye. Oh, well, at least I can shrink it. Shrink. Shrink. Screw it, you're gone, dude. Out. Okay. All right. In this section, I will endeavor to paint with a broader brush stroke, a larger view of a picture in which we see the roles of various themes of this website brought together in one integrated purposeful union. And by so doing, I may likely incur the purposefully negative labeling used by manipulation experts, as well as the many who unwittingly parrot the conditioned responses with which most of us have been programmed to elicit by those who help pull the strings of the puppet masters who manage their human victims of mind control tactics. Warning here, this may be the longest run-on sentence the world has ever seen. Throughout society, as administered not only by the leaders of religious and irreligious cults, but through other companies such as media companies and also agencies and governing bodies, which they have conditioned us to believe are representative government of, by, and for the commoner. This is because there is, in fact, a larger picture than just the mind controlling of the Latter-day Saints or the Jehovah's Witnesses or the Scientologists or the Seventh-day Adventists as gullible victims of unrelated religious con artistry, being for profit and in epidemic proportion, as those who reveal only portions of compartmentalized knowledge to us along with a dose of obfuscating spin do so in order to divert our attention from the larger more illuminating reality of a coordinated agenda being kept from our knowledge by networked individuals affiliated in secretive orders who have not only accumulated massive wealth through the exploitation of huge populations of humanity but have managed to conceal their collusion through the use of such techniques and activities for which I will share some examples. One practice is getting most people to believe that only some insane radical right-wing nutcase would actually believe that such efforts could possibly be coordinated. 
There's a couple of videos right there. And a little commercial. Continuing. A theme helpful to promoting this belief is by characterizing such secretive orders as what they paint as innocuous men's social fraternities. The church did that recently about masonry. Oh, it's just about helping men become <clears throat> better, better, better men, right? That's what they tell us. These organizations are very adept at presenting a good public image with benevolent looking front organizations and associated with charities who assist less fortunate people while maximizing positive publicity and PR benefits for themselves. Saying, look at my good works. Now give us more money to do more good for sick children, etc. How could such benevolent looking organ operations be public relations tools for secret combinations whose leaders m manipulate massive amounts of social upheaval and suffering for their own profit through corporate investment and governance? Surely such an idea could only be entertained by completely deranged, paranoid schizophrenic, right? How was that, guys? Isn't it just a little interesting to see a similar thought voiced in scripture given us by Joseph Smith himself in the Joseph Smith translation portion found in the Book of Mormon, excuse me, the Book of Moses, the Joseph Smith, Smith translation of the Bible. It, uh, in other words, the first eight chapters of Moses or Genesis, right? In the Pearl of Great Price, which is where we will start our investigation of secret combinations, <laughs> as discussed in LDS scripture, and see how divine these teachings prove to be. I would hasten to say that the rhetoric has definitely changed from what elders J. Reuben Clark and Ezra Taft Benson emphatically preached as such views of communist conspiracy infiltrating and dominating the United States government, which are not emphasized today in the same manner as they formerly were by church leaders such as Clark and Benson. This then begs the question, then if the same unchanging Israelite God guides the brethren today as they allege was done in times past, then why the change in the tune from his holy prophets? And that's what I'm saying. Do we have a change? Well, we, 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 we definitely do. We've got a change in tune. We've got... we got the church talking about white privilege in uh, the race and priesthood uh, gospel topics essay. They don't, they don't advertise those on the front page of uh, the church's website, mind you. But it's a much different tone than we previously had. So, when they condemn all racism, they're condemning, of course, the Lord who inspired the scriptures. As we've been told emphatically, uh, we've got, we got it straight from Jesus, uh, whether it's the Book of Mormon translated correctly and containing the fullness of the gospel somehow, even though it doesn't contain jack squat of what Mormons are known for, whether it's, you know, plural marriage or temple baptisms for the dead or, you know, preaching the gospel to the dead. N none of those fullness of the gospel things happen to be in the Book of Mormon, yet Jesus told Joseph Smith to tell us all that the Book of Mormon was translated so correctly that it's the most correct book on earth ever and uh, contained the fullness of the gospel. All right. Wrap your minds around that one, Mormons. I've done several videos pertaining to this subject and perhaps we'll do better at try tying things together today as a related in a related discussion, which will mention current events. This was current when I made this page, um, which would have been like, uh, gen oh, actually, I'm not sure exactly when I made this page. Current events such as Donald Trump's talk this morning and his eulogizing of fellow Illuminati manipulator of humanity, Freemason, Christian evangelist, Billy Graham. Who, by the way, of course, was praised by uh, both sides of the aisle. By pieces of trash like Bill Clinton and the Bushes. Okay, now what does this say here? In the sacred principles, 
enshrined in the United Nations Charter, to which the American people will henceforth pledge their allegiance. <laughs> yeah. And that's Daddy Bush. A second of three known generations. Skull and Bones Boy. Son of Preston, father of GW. Oh my. What are we getting from <laughs> Senior Pope? Okay. What do, what do you. There's nothing satanic about 666, people. 666 is against <clears throat> Christian mythology, which includes Satan, his partner. Adept, ma adept magic. <sighs> Alrighty. Oh, there's Bishop Pace of the presiding bishopric who told us about all the uh, human sacrifice being pra practiced in, on the Wasatch Front by Temple Recommend holding LDS church leaders. Now, he didn't say anybody above patriarch or stake president. He mentioned a uh, patriarch stake president or presidents, bishops, members of the tabernacle choir, young women's and young men's leaders, you know. They all just fooled the bishops and stake presidents whose magic discerning power of worthiness just wasn't working that day. That's all. They're rogues. It's not part of the core of the church. We're not led by evil people like Brigham Young anymore, right? Who said uh, we could kill more American Indians or Lamanites or whatever he called them, savages, <laughs> by donating charitably flour so, laced with uh, ground glass so that they could kill the women and children too. He didn't want to discriminate against them. So he found a way to kill them. He could, he could kill more of, uh, yeah, flour than he could with uh, of gunpowder, he bragged. A good reference place to read about that sort of thing is on uh, Sarah Newcomb's page website called Lamanite Truth. I think it's dot com. Could be dot org. All right. So uh, continuing on here. So we got some photos like the Glenn Pace memo where he's discussing that and said, yeah, it definitely is what's happening and he interviewed lots and lots of victims of satanic ritual abuse who said seven, 75 percent of whom stated clearly that they had been forced to either witness or participate in human sacrifice by their LDS temple recommend holding abusers. Nice. Anybody recognize Mikhail Gorbachev uh, and uh, Oral Roberts? U.S., uh, you know, evangelical Christian using some Masonic tokens you got to use in the temple. But don't worry, Jesus gave it to Joseph Smith seven weeks after he became a master mason. There's nothing suspicious here. Nothing to worry about. He only joined them because they're wonderful and because he didn't care that they, you know, were a Luciferian religion and said Lucifer is God. Of course, why did he make Lucifer to be such a bad guy in the temple and use Christian, you know, theology or folklore there? I guess there's nothing in the Bible that says Lucifer is Satan, but in fact, why is Lucifer even in the Old Testament? as they call it, the Jewish scriptures, right? The Jewish portion of the Bible. Why? Why is he there? It's a Latin name. Hebrews wouldn't have used that, would they? It doesn't make any sense to me. Who put that in there? Maybe the same, maybe it was Tyndale who also put the Catholic invention of Jehovah in there instead of Adonai and, and Elohim. The Hebrew, you know, uh, words used, Elohim meaning the gods and and uh, Adonai is translated in English as uh, my Lord. So he, Tyndale in the 1500s, I believe it was, replaced those words sometimes in the older, in the Jewish part, hijacked by the uh, Christian church in the Bible, and uh, put in the, uh, the invented name of Jehovah, invented by Catholic monk Raymond Martini 
in the 13th century. Well, it became Jehovah. It was Yehoah it's in, in, in its anglicized uh, pronunciation. Became Jehovah after the V and the J were invented a couple hundred years later. And now we find that anachronistically used in the Book of Abraham and in the Book of Mormon. Who was copying that stuff in? Were they just retarded and didn't know that that wouldn't have been there since the name didn't exist? Yeah. An anglicized version of the Latinized created, you know, so the Catholics could have their own name for God, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, here's that, uh, what do we got here? Yeah. Holiness to the Lord. That's what you see, uh, you know, at LDS temples, by the way. Not this, but that name, Holiness to the Lord. Is this what they're talking about? Yeah. Well, it's, it's all fun witchcraft, you know? Nothing to be concerned about here, people. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Now... Let's have a look at the LDS scriptures, finally, from which such teachings originally seem to have derived. But wait! Wow! These are the same scriptures which Bishop Glenn L. Pace used as second counselor in the church's presiding bishopric cited in his memo directed to the Strengthening Church Members Committee to convince them that similar secret combinations existed. Obviously, this was intentionally leaked. They already know that these guys are like NSA of the church, okay? Secret combinations existed within the one true church. So it was all actually done just to promote the narrative that these are rogues, that it's not really the core of the church uh, leadership being satanic. The, the, the one and only, and of course he obviously ignores the fact that it's problematic that all these people would, you know, <clears throat> not be detected by the magical discerning powers of the church leaders whose job was to make sure they were worthy before they gave them the temple recommend. <sighs> the one true church whose members were busy committing human sacrifice and satanic ritual abuse as temple recommend holy members and often in positions of leadership within the LDS Church on other active and other on other active church members, primarily in the Utah, including 60 members, the, the 60 members he personally interviewed, and believed to be honest and accurate in their testimonies of this horrific practice within the church. He stated that gen, that this generational Satanism within the church included leaders of local LDS young women's young women and young men's organizations and he did not exclude the offices of bishop, stake president, or even patriarch, all of which are told by select, we are told, are selected by guidance of the Holy Spirit through worthy priesthood leaders. Sorry for the redundancy there, I should have just shut up and read, because I covered that here, evidently. Leaders entitled to inspiration and discernment through their mantle of their high and holy offices in the church. Such spiritual gifts and a system of checks and balances depending on the discernment so granted to guide God's kingdom on the earth, of course, should not have been able to allow Satanists to hold callings, endangering members and especially children, or be temple workers and members of the tabernacle choir, or even past temple recommend interviews with a bishop or stake president gifted with such discernment as we have been taught they possess. The Book of Mormon tells us about these scoundrels infiltrating and dominating the government, but never the church, where the spirit guides the leaders. <clears throat> Nevertheless, Bishop Pace affirms that 75% of the SRA victims he interviewed were also forced to view and or participate in human sacrifice by the active Mormon leaders. He also stated that he could, that he could have interviewed many other victims in the Wasatch Front, if he had not prioritized his main calling in the presiding bishopric, which generally deals with financial issues and such temporal matters. Here are some of the scriptures Bishop Pace cited, indicating his belief that the saints had been warned of such wicked secret combinations in the latter days. We will start with Joseph Smith's trans with the Joseph Smith translation of the Bible known as known as the JST to Brighamite Mormons and the inspired version to the church 
most closely associated with the surviving members of Joseph Smith's family, not descended from Hiram, the reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, now renamed the Community of Christ. About the time of the millennium, I suppose, the RLDS had the rights to the inspired version of the Bible through Joseph's family and who rejected Brigham Young, among suspicions that Brigham may have been behind not only the murders of Joseph and Hiram, but also Samuel, who died just after the assassination of his older brothers and found himself under the care of one of Brigham's treacherous Danite chieftains by the name of Hosea Stout, whose care only took a few weeks, if that long, to dispatch Samuel to the eternal worlds. As a matter of fact, it was through the RLDS church that I... Dave purchased the inspired version of the Bible long, long ago in a faraway galaxy in order to be able to read the revealed word of the Lord beyond Moses chapter 8, as found in the Pearl of Great Price. Okay, and there's some videos that are very informative right there regarding this whole situation in the webpage. So I just click on it, they're housed on YouTube. So here it is straight from the church's own scriptures. We're starting in the book of Moses. I think it's, yeah, it says chapter six. Yeah, well, there's some interesting stuff in chapter five, kind of preparatory related to this, but here, it looks like we're starting in verse 29. It says, wherefore they have forsworn themselves and by their oaths they have brought upon themselves death and a hell have I prepared for them if they repent not. And it came to pass that Enoch went forth in the land, testifying against their works, and all men were offended because of, the, because of him. And they came forth to hear him, saying, We go yonder to behold the seer, for he prophesieth, and there is a strange thing in the land. A wild man hath come among us. And Satan said unto Cain, Swear unto me by thy throat. And if thou tell it, thou shalt die. I think this is going back to chapter 5. And swear thy brethren by their heads, and by the living God that they tell it not. For if they tell it, they shall surely die. And this, that thy father may not know it. And this day I will deliver thy brother Abel into thy hands. And Satan swore unto Cain that he would do according to his commands. And all these things were done in secret. And Cain said, Truly I am Master Mahan, the master of this great secret, that I may murder and get gain. Wherefore Cain was called Master Mahan, or Master Mason, according to some, and he gloried in his wickedness. Skipping ahead, for Lamech, having entered into a covenant with Satan after the manner of Cain, wherein he became Master Mahan, master of that great secret, which was administered unto Cain by Satan, and Irad, or Irad, the son of Enoch, having known their secret, began to reveal it unto the sons of Adam. Wherefore Lamech, being angry, slew him, not like unto Cain his brother, for the sake of getting gain, but, for the, but he slew him for the oath's sake. For from the days of Cain there was a secret combination, and their works were in the dark, and they knew every man his brother. And now let's look at Ether chapter 8 in book, the book of, book, <clears throat> book of Mormon, chapter 13. And it came to pass that Achish gathered in unto the house of Jared all his kinsfolk, and said unto them, Will ye swear unto me that ye will be faithful unto me in the thing which I shall desire of you? And it came to pass that they swear unto him by the God of heaven, and also by the heavens, and also by the earth, and by their heads, that whoso should vary from the assistance which Achish desired should lose his head, and whoso should divulge whatsoever thing Achish made known unto them, the same should lose his life. And it came to pass that thus they did agree with Achish, and Achish did administer unto them the oaths which were given by them of old, who sought power, which had been handed down even from Cain, who was a murderer from the beginning. And also gay, apparently, they noted that every man knew his brother, right? <clears throat> In the biblical terminology, 
that's what that means. And they were kept up by the power of the devil to administer these oaths unto the people, to keep them in darkness, to help such as sought power to gain power, and to murder, and to plunder, and to lie, and to commit all manner of wickedness and whoredoms. And it was the daughter of Jared who put it into his heart to search up these things of old, and Jared put it into the heart of Achish, Wherefore Achish administered it unto his kindred and friends, leading them away by fair promises to do whatsoever thing he desired. And it came to pass that they formed a secret combination, even as they of old, which combination is most abominable and wicked of all in the sight of God. For the Lord God worketh not in secret combinations, neither doth he will that man should shed blood, but in all things hath forbidden it from the beginning. And now I, Moroni, do not write the manner of their oaths and combinations, for it hath been made known unto me that they are had among all people, and they are had among the Lamanites. And they have caused the destruction of this people of whom I am spe now speaking, meaning the Jaredites of the Book of Mormon, found in the Book of Ether, who proceeded in the storyline, the Nephites. In other words, it says they came over at the time of the Tower of Babel, or Babel, about 2000 B.C., or 2200 B.C. or something, right? Well, yeah, about 2200 B.C. is where it would work into the biblical timeline. So I have a question here. Who among the Jaredites, the brother of Jared and his family, and Jared and his family, and their faithful, super awesome friends, who brought these satanic Masonic oaths across the waters to America so that this chick could uh, search up these things of old? And yeah, seriously, think about that. Whoever was writing this uh, kind of uh, kind of created a little problem in the narrative there, as obviously these prophets and their super righteous, you know, family members that the Lord spared from the problems of having their language confounded so they could come to America because he only brought the righteous people. That's what it says in the Book of Mormon. Which of them would have brought these satanic oaths? of the Freemasons, right? And whatsoever nation shall uphold such secret combinations to get power and gain until they shall spread over the nation, behold, they shall be destroyed. For the Lord will not suffer that the blood of this, his saints which shall be shed by them shall always cry unto him from the ground for vengeance upon them, and yet he avenged them not. Wherefore, O ye Gentiles, so he's speaking to us, that's what we're being told there, right? It is wisdom in God that ye should, that these things should be shown unto you, that thereby ye may repent of your sins, and suffer not that these murderous combinations shall get above you. These murderous secret societies would be a plausible translation, which are built up to get power and gain in the work, yea, even the work of destruction come upon you. Yea, even the sword of the justice of the eternal God shall fall upon you to your overthrow and destruction if you shall suffer these things to be. Wherefore, the Lord commandeth you when ye shall see these things come among you, that ye shall awake to a sense of your awful situation, because of this secret combination which shall be among you, or what went to it because of the blood of them who have been slain, for they cry and cry from the dust for vengeance upon it. Okay, so and it cometh to pass that whoso buildeth it up, the new world order essentially seeketh to overthrow the freedom of all lands, nations, and countries, and it bringeth to pass the destruction of all people, for it is built up by the devil, who is the father of all lies, even that same liar who beguiled our parents from the beginning, because caused man to murder, etc., etc. 
Okay, and wherefore I, Moroni, am commanded to write these things, that evil, evil may be done away, and that the time will come that Satan may have no power upon the children of men, the hearts of the children of men, that everybody can do good and live happily ever after. Okay, so, <laughs> you know, it describes Freemasonry as the secret combinations. Uh, and when it's among the Lamanites and the Nephites, they just call it the Gideon and robbers. And they just call it the secret combination or something when it's the Jaredite people uh, who came to the Americas after the flood of Noah washed everybody away, even though it didn't wash away the American Indians, apparently. Now, since uh, the Gospel Topics essay on DNA in the Book of Mormon addressing the problem that the Nephite DNA cannot be found, they just disappeared into a sea of people who arrived in the United States here, in, in the Americas, 9,000 years before Adam was the first flesh on earth, according to the Joseph Smith translation of the Bible, um, as canonized in, you know, the Book of Moses in the Pearl of Great Prize. And they weren't destroyed by the fake news flood of Noah, which didn't destroy the Egyptians either, and other people whose histories we see continuing right through that 2300, 2344 BC time period, uh, unaffected by this Jewish fairy tale. But never mind, the gospel is true, brothers and sisters. Pay your tithing. Okay, so, um, you know, we're being warned here that, that, that we just have to, you know, pay attention and do something about it. And, and, and people like uh, Ezra Taft Benson were emphatically following what was actually in the Book of Mormon, which now the church leaders seem to completely ignore as they uh, promote dishonest uh, dis dis dishonest narratives like uh, what we have with the coronavirus thing and, uh, you know, all this white privilege, anti-white garbage that is, you know, you know, promoted by Marxist organizations like BLM, Black Lives Matter. Of course, black people's lives matter. So do brown people's, white people's, red, you know, everybody's life matters. And these guys don't seem like anybody matters to them when they're rioting and destroying and, you know, creating all this violence. And then and, and under the narrative of, you know, police are being meaner to them than other people. Um, hello, uh, one out of three black men go to prison, not just because white cops are prejudiced, uh, but because uh, they commit a whole lot more crime, uh, you know, on a percentage basis of their population, of their race, than anybody else does in the United States or any country that I've, you know, investigated that on. It just happens to be a fact. Uh, it's just the way that it is. And, you know, some people like Jimmy Snow want to blame it on poverty. Well, you know, uh, the term, you don't have a Chinaman's chance, is, is something that you know, is indicative of the fact that, uh, you know, your, your, your Rockefellers and Morgans and, you know, the, the, these rich industrialist uh, people backed, you know, bloodline families backed by big money from Europe originally and so forth um, in their factories and in their, in their railroad building. <coughs> uh, yeah were just about as bad as you can be to any human being to the uh, Chinese people who, whose lives were just so expendable in building the uh, railroads. Um, you know, maybe even the Mormon uh, uh, you know, in owned portions of uh, Union Pacific or whatever, right? Uh, of course, Brigham Young got Mormons to uh, you know, work on it for free. Well, actually, he told me, Pam, they just lied. But uh, yeah partnership there. Of course, he was all, he was part of that group, all backed by Kuhn and Loeb and so forth. Nothing to worry about. No, nothing to be suspicious about. So, um, a Chinaman's chance. I mean, there are other people that have come to the United States under bad circumstances. I mean, you know, have, we probably had a good hundred thousand people that came in as slaves and they're just as much slaves if you call them indentured servants as 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 if you called them slaves everybody in Georgia they, they was all white folk you know uh, 50,000 people or so came as slaves uh, those were you know uh, the, the English uh, prisons and being emptied uh, to uh, you know the chain gangs there 
and uh, till the 4th of July, 1776, then they had to start sending them to Australia. So, um, yeah, we probably had a good 100,000 colonists in the 1600s that, you know, many of them were kidnapped. They, they, they didn't just like sign up for seven year indentured servitude to be uh, Ben Franklin's assistant uh, at a printing press. They, they were dying in the fields of Barbados as slaves at such rapid rates that uh, importing uh, black slaves who were being sold by black elitists in Africa, you know, who had power over their people, the privileged selling the non-privileged in every race uh, for profit and exploiting other human lives. And it wasn't just, you know, all, 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 all the white folks uh, that were, uh, you know, th th we're now all white privileged. But uh, yeah, one and a half percent of white people at the height of black slavery were slave owners, uh, maybe closer to three percent in the southern half of the United States. Um, that, 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 that war between the states was, uh, you know, five of the uh, northern states were slave states, by the way. It wasn't about slavery. Um, that, that was a political ploy that helped the North uh, win the win the war by causing more dissension in the South when Abraham Lincoln did the, uh, that emancipation proclamation well into the war that I believe only affected southern slaves and not northern slaves. The one indentured uh, servitude uh, benefit though uh, for original, originally kidnapped or fraudulently or desperately, you know, sli signed up people uh, who wanted to maybe possibly leave Europe uh, and may have uh, been duped into something that was uh, not really accurately represented. I mean, half of, the, half, half of these people were dying on slave ships, by the way, white people too, right? But that's not cool to put in our history books because it doesn't go along with the PC narrative of uh, white privilege, uh, which the Mormon church is going along with. As I stated, you can read them, even use the words white privilege in the, uh, yeah, the race and priesthood thing. So we're all just evil. I mean, if 28%, you know, approximately of, of free blacks owned slaves and one and a half percent of, uh, you know, free whites owned slaves, it's still all about white privilege. It's my fault and your fault for what the elitists did on both sides of the tracks. And what about the Muslims enslaving white people? What are those numbers like? Huge, if you look back in history. But no, it's all about white privilege because that's the politically correct narrative. The political narrative. Just just creating the term politically correct implies that it is correct. Uh, and, and a lot of these things are very dishonest. Just like the term conspiracy theorist, which is also a Tavistock CIA developed term, within the term, you know, puts doubt on, 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 on people who are uh, stating stating things uh, as they are many times and uh, which, which are, you know, not what those who own our society want people to believe. All right, how's that for a rant? Let's continue. So yeah, the LDS Church is promoting this BS narrative um, that all the corporations promote because they're all owned by United States government um, companies, privately owned plantations known as cities, states, counties, school districts that all function as transnational investment banks investing all over the world and pretty much hold, uh, you know, as a group of close to 200,000 municipal, privately owned municipal corporations, hold as a group uh, majority stock in the Fortune 500 companies, which all promote the same politically so-called correct narratives in their commercials so that things appear normal to us, <clears throat> not presented as the subject of the commercial. For instance, you know, whether it's nationwide insurance or JP Morgan, JP Morgan Chase running a commercial, you'll see the same depictions of how we should view society. Okay, wherefore, I, Moroni, I am commanded to write these things that evil may be done away and that, you know, Satan will lose his power. Okay, great. 
The verses in Ether 8 have been a catalyst for much concern and investigation into allegations of conspiratorial activities designed to bring about a satanic global totalitarian police state under the United Nations, into which the Israelite God's favorite nation of the USA and nations of the USA and Israel, the state of Rothschild, would be reduced to ordinary godless nation states like the rest of the world under a massive communist oligarchy. Look at Dick Cheney throwing the orange. Mormonism's Babylonian roots. Okay. Wait. The Statue of Liberty's face is Melania? Alright. Let's wade through this. 322. That's the Equinox. And Lodge 322. <clears throat> We're skull and bones. Oh, still going. Hit a home run. Throw the horns. Joel Osteen. God's got this. Yep. So when you see me doing this thing here, I'm throwing the sixes. I'm against the Jesus mythology, but not for the Illuminati, which, however, appeared to be very good as far as uh, what appears to me to be another intentional leak when we're told that the horseman was hit by lightning and then we saw the, uh, you know, the protocols, basically, of the Illuminati that they wanted to destroy the Catholic Church and the, uh, as well as the... Uh, the monarchies. But who funded who, who funded the Bavarian Illuminati? Who funded the Bernie Sanders of the University of Ingolstadt, Adam Weishaupt? Who funded that? Where did that money come from? Okay. <clears throat> Is that meant to confuse us just as, you know, the seeing those protocols of the you know, the oath of the Jesuits to kill all Freemasons and stuff that they're at war. When you see Freemasons uh, who lead Christianity and, and, and Mormonism and so forth answering, answering to Jesuits. When you see George, the deification of, of, of George, you know, Washington on the Capitol uh, building ceiling, painted, of course, by a Jesuit. When you see Georgetown University uh, right there, when, when, when you can see that the Jesuit influence in the United States educational and political system is far from what we're you know, told or far from what is implied in when we were told we have separation of church and state. That's just a myth. Church, you know, religions, they get 501c3, you know, uh, benefits of tax exemption as long as they uphold, because they uphold, uh, you know, the, the line of the deification of the, the, the government, the offices of government, we're told that we, we basically worship the, the, the idea that we have representative government. So the Book of Mormon tells us the opposite thing regarding the secret combination representing the Illuminati um, and illuminated Freemasonry. And it, when, what we find in the Book of Mormon is it says that no, that, that they went to establish a king over the land. But the, but, but, but the Illuminati protocols, you know, that were leaked, as I just said, uh, or as I believe it intentionally was done um, because it causes us to believe certain things a certain way just like when they show you UFO stuff and say the government's trying to keep it from you right well the companies that are showing you this stuff are owned by interests that own you know your privately owned plantations that you live on so think about it people no the government doesn't want you to know but the history channel is leaking it so that's what I'm saying here. So, yeah, they, they, we're, the Book of Mormon tells us that, that the Illuminati essentially wanted to establish a king over the land. No, not at all. The, the representative government, or what appears to be representative government, on privately owned plantations where these representatives are really, you know, in the employ of the 
of the of the plantation, the, the corporate entities and their sub entities. In other words, the United States and then the states or districts and and, and, and you know counties and cities, townships, whatnot, school districts, all part of a master company, which is part of the you know British uh, company, which is part of the Roman company, and uh, that's easy enough to see. Look at the trade. Look at the Treaty of Versailles. You know. Um, you got Americans signing you into slavery after we supposedly won the war and we're going to have to pay all this money to English banks, right? Which are now related to the World Bank. Think about it. Yeah, and who's, who's these guys' loyalty to? Like Franklin, right? The Temple Bar in London, no doubt, right? And look at, well, he belonged to what? You know, he's a Freemason, high degree Freemason, Ordo Templi Orientis, Hellfire Club, um yeah no but he's he's representing the people and uh, and then and then and, and, and king george is being represented you know and 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 who are they signing for for king george who what does he call himself a prince of the holy roman empire this is why this is why you're listed as a tenant on your property deed you don't own it that's why it's called real estate because you're gaining certain certain amounts of control of something held in the state that you do not and never will own. Home ownership is a lie. Okay, slaves can't own property. You can you, know, you can read that in Black's Law. In fact, that that video I did recently where that person gave us those excellent references is, will be very helpful there. And like I like I commented in there, look up uh, the word human. Uh, in, you know, it might have to be the right uh, year of Black's Law. I've read it myself, though. Human, the, the, you know, it refers to monster. What's a monster? It's not what you see on TV, the, the, the scary monster. A monster is something, you know, it, uh, not, monsters don't have property rights. That's the bottom line. That's something, I mean, that's borne out by, by, by the fact that you don't own property. And that's, you don't own real property. You, you don't own it. You're a tenant, read the deed. Okay. Rant <clears throat> completed on that. J. Rubin, okay. Church leaders such as J. Rubin Clark and Ezra Taft Benson would be noted for their zeal in advocating groups such as the John Birch Society, established by Robert Welch, and Eagle Forum, under the hand of Phyllis Schlafly, who appear ready to defend the God-inspired U.S. Constitution, as we were told by President Benson, who heavily promoted the John Birch Society as a viable defense for these inspired instruments of the framework of representative government and a bastion of freedom, integral, integral to America's divinely appointed role in world history to promote the needed environs to restore the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ in the dispensation of the fullness of times through the instrumentality of the prophet Joseph Smith Jr. and timed to coincide with the imminent second coming of Jesus Christ, to rule over the earth with his chosen people after they have helped him to establish the kingdom of God on earth. And a hundred billion dollar slush fund so in the Ensign Peak Advisors so the church will have plenty of money to spend when Jesus comes, right? That's important. All these points sound so perfectly sensible and integrate so well with the manifest destiny doctrine taught in the Book of Mormon, thus making perfect sense, perfect sense to the devout and politically conservative member of the LDS Church until one ventures beyond the focus promoted by these groups on certain NGOs, such as the Council on Foreign Relations, or CFR and Trilateral Commission, TC, with their stated goals of submergence of U.S. sovereignty into the United Nations pool of nation states, or the focus on activist groups linked as communist front groups like Students for Democratic Society, SDS, or the Black Panthers, and delve deeper into the lives of founders of and organizations such 
of such organizations where we see that there is a network of individuals associated in more powerful organizations, more dynastic in nature, and intermingled in the occult through various secretive orders, sometimes referred to as secret societies, secretive societies, etc., with secret oaths and or combinations such as are found within the highest degrees and in certain rites and orders within Freemasonry. And it's related to and its related orders like the Shriners and other esoteric orders such as Rosicrucianism think Red Cross, the Order of the Golden Dawn, the Order of the Garter, the Knights of St. John of Jerusalem, the Order of the Illuminati, P2, the Society of Jesus, or the Jesuit Order, the Supreme Military Order of Malta, or MSOM, the Hellfire Fire Club, Ordo Templi Orientis, Mothers of Darkness, etc., and find the leaders of powerful groups such as the CFR, Trilateral Commission, or Committee of 300, the Builder Group, Berg Group, the Roundtable Group, the Royal Institute of International Affairs, which is essentially the British version of the CFR, <clears throat> and begin to see a glimpse of the hierarchical order and networked affiliation by which the dynasties at the top of the food chain covertly manipulate so much activity within what we are trained to believe are independently established societies called countries with their own representative governments of by and for the people which are further subdivided into states, provinces, counties and cities, etc all with their own representative governments modeled after but always at least slightly inferior to God's own divinely established and signed to the nations as set up by the so-called God-fearing and or inspired founders of the United States of America for the aforementioned purpose in fulfillment of the words recorded in the books of Isaiah and Malachi that out of Zion or in other words Jackson County, Missouri <laughs> the USA will go forth a law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem as we find clarified in LDS scripture including the Book of Mormon and the Doctrine and Covenants or out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem just would be maybe something more like a chiasmus where they repeat shit that means the same thing in Jewish scripture and it wasn't really about two places like the Book of Mormon uh, is trying to tell us. Okay. Club Bilderberg. Hello, Bill. Hello, Judge. All right. Porter Rockwell. All right. There, there. We're talking about some Danites and their secret combinations. There's Adolf Hitler. Gee, where'd she learn those things? Eastern Star, Michelle Obama, the Queen Mother. Head of uh, British Freemasonry. Celine Dion, what are you doing? Throwing that Illuminati symbolism up there. That Egyptian stuff where you're covering one eye. It's just a coincidence. None of these people know what they're doing. It's all coincidental. Brad Pitt. As I was saying, all this perfect all this makes perfect sense to the devout conservative Mormon until further study reveals problematic inconsistencies in the authenticity of some of our alleged history, which supported the Manifest Destiny theme taught in the Book of Mormon and elsewhere, as well as evidence of controlled opposition to such New World Order agendas located in even the trusted John Birch Society and Eagle Forum and their leaders having links to organizations like MSOM, Masonry, and the Catholic Church and its networked organizations along with other noted conservatives with similar affiliations within the occult community 
who put up a good show on the surface while acting to sabotage many of the causes they pretend to espouse as defenders of our God-given liberties, which they publicly tout under the guise of being Christians devoted to the upholding of the sacred constitution of the United States of America. Examples like Mike Huckabee or Mike Pence who loved to appear for a ready audience, or Ron Paul, who garnered political support calling for an audit of the privately owned Federal Reserve banking system, while he knew full well that such figures were readily available all the while in the Fed's own equivalent of our privately owned cities, counties, pension funds, and states comprehensive annual financial report, or CAFRs, which are available for viewing but virtually unknown to the average Joe citizen, and tell the tale of private ownership and massive offshore as well as domestic investment and meddling in corporate power games to the observer who is capable of locating and comprehending the damning information published in these annual reports, and so well obfuscated from public view. From the video presentations found in this section, the viewer may have his or her eyes open to, the, to a world which has been hiding in plain sight, as the illuminated ones sometimes phrase it, even in public materials these days. The unveiling of the true nature of corporate governance is available to the seeker of truth who knows inside that something just has not been adding up quite right. Not, not the way they've been taught by various sources as named above and including the church. Oh, but it is about to add up much more clearly now. Special acknowledgement for information on corporate governance and related CAFR breakdowns proving through documented financial activities of these privately owned municipal municipalities their true nature and function. We applaud the video entitled Corporation Nation, published on the World Tyranny Channel, from which certain information is referenced. The obfuscation of such information, which renders clearly views of how and why our society never gets, never gets it right for the people, is a major function of the Pied Pipers in the media and the churches who are networked together in orders mentioned above, which they keep silent on or, when needed, paint into the framework of urban legends of the past, as they do with the Illuminati on the global scene and with the Danites within the church, the LDS church, right? Whose hitmen like Bill Hickman and Oren Porter Rockwell are portrayed as folk heroes instead of ruthless murderers, who did the bidding of mafia-style leaders such as Joseph Smith with his Council of Fifty and his spiritual wife system in Nauvoo or bloodthirsty Brigham Young, the Grand Archie of the Danite Band in Deseret, whom <clears throat> you've been effectively conditioned to believe through endless repetition in correlated lesson materials were righteous men with virtual folk hero status. To the honest in heart who is prepared to follow the admonition attributed to St. Paul in the New Testament, I now challenge you to prove all things through investigating and fact-checking the material published herein. And here's that trilogy I made, which is probably took me a hundred hours. I had a lot of, you know, I did it on an eight gig phone, people. Yeah, is LDS, LDS General Corporate, whatever, LDS Conference and Corporate Governance, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, yeah, that's got a lot of info on it. And there's a, there's a summary one, uh, be right up here above somewhere. Anyway, you can find it all on this uh, page. Um, the Secret Combinations page on the Mormon Truth Videos Gospel Topics Hub. And perhaps the actions of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and its leadership being contrary to the warnings found in the Book of Mormon and by earlier leaders of the Church will begin to make sense as you ponder the ownership of the LDS church. Of course, we don't see who that is, but then again, Heber J. Grant, 
mortgaged the church to the hilt, including the temple properties, in order to corner the sugar industry in Utah, but Jesus forgot to tell them that there was about to be an economic turndown, and they went into default to Union Bank of New York, a Rockefeller-controlled bank at the time. Just a coincidence, nothing to worry about. There will also be links in there to be helpful and supportive of uh, Dodger Dave, my survival, which is an imperialist situation right now, by the way. And um, remember to subscribe and to share in places like Messenger and Facebook and Reddit and wherever, you know. Yeah. Yep, participation is the name of the game, my dad used to say. And he was right about a few things. I'm Dodger Dave, and I'm out. Have a great day.